Hello, I am so glad that you are joining with us on Southside Online Zoom or that if you haven't been able to join live with the Southside Online Zoom that you're catching up now on our YouTube page. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Nick, I'm the pastor at Southside. And I just want to really quickly explain what it is that you are going to be watching this morning. You are going to be watching a condensed version of last week's talk, about 20 minutes um, in which I looked at some ideas based on uh, Paul's description of Jesus in Philippians chapter 2. Um, about how we might be a people who see Jesus not only as saviour, but as example. And we're going to replay that talk and then I'll come back on at the end very quickly. And then you're going to go into your groups to, or, or stay in your group, sorry, to discuss that, to get things down on paper, which can then be fed back into uh, myself and Danella um, and the leadership. And we, we are so excited to think about how this is going to help us as a church navigate through these coming months. So I, I am so grateful to those of you who have been in touch in the last week and in particular just um, immediately last weekend just saying that's really provoked some thinking, that's really challenging me to think, been excited to hear um, in particular a couple of stories that, that folk are already trying to think about doing things um, as a result of what was shared last Sunday. So you get the condensed version now and I'll be back in about 20 minutes. This is what it says about Jesus in Philippians chapter 2. Paul says, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And I also want to read um, it actually is something that I referenced. I, I, I read some of it when I spoke on these verses uh, three weeks ago, I think it was. Um, and it came up in my planning for this morning. I, I really felt I should read these verses again. And then I listened to my talk from three weeks ago just to make sure I wasn't completely repeating myself and was like, oh, yeah, I use those verses then. It just feels like, yeah, these verses, to me at least, would appear to go... Uh, go closely with what we've just read. So this is from Mark chapter 10. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized. And they said to him, we are able. And Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many." I hope that some of you saw some really incredible um, data that came out last weekend, I believe it was. It came out from a survey that had been com commissioned by the children's charity World Vision and another charity called Your Neighbour, which is made up of it's, uh, thousands of churches in the UK. It's, it's either a thousand or four thousand, but anyway, a huge number of churches across denominations in the UK. And it was, and it was a survey looking at um, non-Christians views on the church 
And one of the incredibly exciting things that came out of that survey, it was published in, in, in national newspapers um, as well, or it was picked up in national newspapers as well. But one of the really exciting statistics that came out of it was this, that three years ago, 20% of non-Christians believed that the church was having a positive role in society. So three years ago, that figure was 20% of non-Christians. Now... That figure is 34%, so 14% uh, increase in just three years. Over a third of non-Christians believe that the church is having a positive role in society. And I think that that's really significant. It, it, it shows that somehow, and, and the pandemic I'm sure has played a big role in this, but, but that somehow the church is now being seen as a force for good in society. And, and, and now, of course, we know that the church's role is not solely to be a force for good, but it is to be a force for good. It is to be workers for justice and equality and 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 rightness in society. It is to be it is to be a group that, as it serves, proclaims the name of Jesus, and as it serves, calls out the God shapeness, the God image in all people. And so that is incredibly exciting. You might also be aware, and and uh, and. I want to be kind of careful about how I talk about this, but you might also be aware of a judicial review that is currently going on in Scotland um, as a result of um, a, a case that has been brought forward by some ministers and churches in Scotland, basically asking for a judicial review on whether the government is allowed to close churches. And... Um, you know, I can, I can only say that I, I personally really disagree with with this take on it. You know, I, I, I really disagree on the on, on churches taking the government basically essentially to court or, or potentially taking them to court over the right of churches to open. It just does not sit at all well with me. And I was reading something the other day, not in direct relation to that, but in relation to the opening up of churches. And um, with with uh, in light in light of the announcements that were made both in Westminster and Holyrood this week about roadmaps towards reopening of society, and one of the comments that was made by somebody who spoke on behalf of a of a large group of churches, not not a group that we're a part of, but a large group of churches, was that we are constantly like pushing the government to open churches as soon as possible. And we've been working through Philippians. And as we've worked through Philippians, and in particular as I have reflected on these verses that we read this morning from Philippians and that narrative that we read from Mark chapter 10, it's also in Matthew 20. Um, but as I've looked at those verses, as I've tried to pray through what what does it mean to be a people who follow Jesus who and, and, and who follow in the model of Jesus? We don't just think that Jesus was our saviour, but he is. But Jesus is our example also. Remember, I, I think it might have even been last week or the week before, but quoting from one of, uh, I think it's 1 John, it says, you know, that, that we will do as Jesus did. And so... Uh, what does it mean for a church that is called to do as Jesus did, to be like Jesus, to see Jesus not only as saviour, not only as Lord, but also as example? What does it look like for us to live that out in this season of life in Scotland? And I think, um, and I've come to I want to say come to believe, but it, it isn't that I'm not. I would love to have discussion with any of you who want to with me about this. In fact, I would just beg you to come and talk to me about it. Pick it, push back on my ideas. I want my, my ideas uh, and my belief to be formed in community. Um, but I share this with you as, as a starting point for us. And, and it is in this belief that... The church of Jesus Christ, looking like Jesus Christ, should not ultimately be a church that is 
pushing a government to allow it to open or is asking for it to be opened or, or, or granted special uh, special place or privilege in society. Although that is often how many of us, at least, might be tempted to see it. Have you ever heard the phrase, perhaps you've even used the phrase, we are a Christian nation? Have you ever used that phrase? We are, well, you know, we're a Christian country or a Christian nation, or, or maybe even we used to be a Christian nation or we used to be a Christian country. I'm going to let you in on a secret. This, oh, I'm going to let you in on a secret. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as a Christian nation. Why? And this is like that little cheesy sort of phrase, but it's a true phrase as well, because God has no grandchildren. God has no grandchildren. So, so we are no more, uh, um, we are no more Scottish, because, uh, no more Christian because we are Scottish than, as Nicky Gumbel says, going into a garage makes you a car. And so therefore, this whole, the, the whole idea of being a Christian nation is one that I just simply cannot buy into. We are Christians within the nation. We are Christians within society. We are called to be salt and we are called to be light. But this is not a Christian nation. What is the best way to see this nation become more Christ-like? Is it through the imposition of law? Is it through the, uh, through the pressure on governments to allow churches to open? No! The way in which we will pray, in which we may see this nation become more like Jesus is the church of Jesus Christ rising up from its knees. Okay, on its knees, right on its knees in prayer, on its knees in repentance, rising up to be the people of God who God has called us to be, sharing the gospel, sharing faith. You know, I've been praying this week because I've just been so convicted. You know, when was the last time that I personally shared the gospel with somebody? When was the last time that I personally led somebody to faith? When was the last time that you did that? But the, but the church... Uh, the church in, or, or, or faith in this nation will increase not because we petition government, not because we change laws, but because the spirit moves, drawing people to God and they are changed and transformed. Now, this is a slight oversimplification. Do I think that Christians should be involved with politics? Yes, of course I do. Do I think that Christians should be involved in, 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 in sharing their thoughts on things, on ethical things. Absolutely, I do. But ultimately, the way that a nation is transformed is through encounter with Jesus. As the church loves, serves and proclaims. And friends, I want to suggest that that is exactly what we see in Jesus. That is exactly what we see in Jesus. We see Jesus being in very nature God and yet not saying, I am gonna, I am gonna hold on to this status he had. He had genuine status and he laid it down. He had genuine, uh, he had the genuine. Um, ability and right to hold sway and yet he swayed on a cross and and yet so often the way of the church would be uh, or, or has been at least trying to put ourselves forward trying to trying to gain ourselves a position now, I am not saying there is anything wrong with being well thought of in our communities. I hope we will be 34% up from 20%. Let's pray that it will go up again next year and up again the year after. But what I'm concerned with as I, as I reflect on Philippians, as I reflect on the disciples, as I reflect on those figures, is how as we begin to emerge out of, hopefully, out of lockdown and into 
new, whatever that looks like, can we continue to be a group of people, and this is churches across the board, who, who are seen with growing favour in the light of the nation, rather than as people who think that they have some special or privileged position. Jesus did have privilege, and he laid it down for me and for you. And so I suppose that my concern and my heart at the moment is how do we as a church proactively and deliberately seek the betterment of our society? How do we proactively and deliberately seek to identify with our community? How do we proactively and deliberately come alongside people for whom the last year has been long, but you know how it, it, it's like that last sleep before Christmas for kids, it just feels like, or that last week before Christmas, it just feels like so much longer. That's kind of like, I hope, where we are now. We're in that last week before Christmas. Christmas, and it feels like it's going to be a long time. And for the business owners um, around there, the small business owners, you can just walk up. I thought about doing this talk, walking up and down the high street, the cafe owners, the pubs, the restaurants, all of these places. How do we bless, honour and encourage our community in this last stint, rather than just saying when it becomes possible, yes, great, churches can get back 50 people in a place, let's find somewhere to borrow and let's start on doing it. Jesus, Paul says, made himself nothing, took the very nature of a servant, and was found made in human likeness. Eugene Peterson says, I've quoted him before, in his paraphrase of the beginning of John's Gospel, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighbourhood. Church, my question for us is how, rather than just being like, yep, we're okay, yep, we can get back to it, how can we identify, how should we identify with our community as we move through the coming months? one of the ways that I think we can do that, and I think we are uniquely positioned to do that, to do this, is to say, we're not gonna, t we don't need any special privilege on size of meetings, so do you know what? We'll go at the same rate as a cafe or a pub. We'll go at the same rate as everybody else who wants to meet up with their friends. So if that's six, we'll do six. If it's 10, we'll do 10. When it becomes, when it, when it becomes 20, we'll do 20, whatever it is, that we'll actually say we are going to identify with our community and do things at the pace of our community rather than taking that special privileged position which is afforded in some of the legislation to people from faith groups. Yes, we love meeting, but six people is meeting. Ten people is meeting. For some Christians in the world, our King's kids have been hearing about them, I'm not going to say the name, but for some Christians uh, in the world, to get 10 or 15 people together would be, a, would be just absolutely fantastic. So let us not rush back too quickly at the expense of identifying with and walking with, and perhaps even in, Let's think about where we might do some of our meeting in our community. There are so many unknowns as we come into the next couple of months, but we need to be asking the Lord as we look at verses like these, and if we are going to be serious about, we want to be like Jesus. We want to, we want to honour Jesus. <laughs> we want to honour the history of Southside that was pioneering. I mean, imagine how pioneering it would be to say, actually, we're not going to, we're not going to aim for 50. We're not going to aim for 80. We're not going to aim for 100. We're going to aim for 8 while it's 8, 12 while it's 12, 20 while it's, you know. Imagine the impact 
that they might be, or I believe, sorry, they would be, as we follow the example of Jesus and walk in the spirit of our of our Southside ancestors, as I prayed, many of whom are still sat amongst us. And said to our community, we love you enough that we will put your the place that you we will identify with you in the place that you are ahead of the place that is afforded to us. We will not be like those who go, yeah, it's all right for us, the Gentiles who lord it over them. I know it's not quite a lord, we, we won't do that. We'll, we will identify with the least, with the last, with the lost, as we seek to be a people of Jesus, for Jesus, and bringing the love of Jesus, continuing to bring the love of Jesus, so that 34% becomes 40 and 44 and 50, and as that percentage goes up, that people are drawn to him. Let your light shine before men, says Jesus, that they may see your good deeds and glorify God when he comes. So friends, I'm asking, and I'm asking as your friend, I'm asking as your brother, I'm asking as your pastor as well, that we might creatively and prayerfully, prayerfully and creatively think about how we do these coming months, these coming two months until the end of April, but then the months after that. So that as we continue to live in this place for years to come, the way that we conducted ourselves and the way that we model Jesus in our community might be that in one year, five years, 10 years or 20 years, be seen to have had an incredible and lasting kingdom impact. So that, just as Jesus is now on his throne being exalted, there will be many people in this town, in Troon, in Presswick, in the surrounding villages, who will be part of that worshipping throng, <laughs> that worshipping community, who we will see on the day when Jesus returns. So I hope that that provoked, encouraged, challenged, excited, made you a wee bit nervous as well, um, if you were seeing it for the first time, then um, obviously you've not had as much time to process that. But for some of you, um, I hope that just hearing some of that stuff for a second time will have really helped you as you think about it. And just before you go into your groups, or oh, I've done it again, haven't I? Uh, just before you stay in your groups uh, for, for this discussion um, around some questions that I've already sent out and that you've already seen. I mean, you may have already uh, watched this and once on your own before beforehand, but there is just one thing that I wanna say, uh, and it is this, that Jesus became human and Jesus is human now, even for those who didn't recognize him, even for those who don't recognize him. And so a lot of these questions, and I know that we've got so many activists in Southside, so many people who just love serving the community in so many practical ways. And so like the temptation will be to jump um, to how can we serve? What can we do? And that isn't a bad question. And it is part of the questions. Um, but actually, just to consider that Jesus became human, and Jesus is human now, even for those who didn't recognize him and don't recognize him. This isn't all about making known to others what we do. I believe that as we seek to follow, not uh, to believe not only that Jesus is savior, but example, and to follow in his example, that there is profound spiritual impact on our community, even if they don't know it. Paul says that our battle is not against flesh and blood, that we are in a spiritual battle. And so what I'm saying is 
Yes, there will be ideas coming out at this time. Yes, there will be practical suggestions. But let's also consider, think about, pray into, what is the spiritual impact? Or how can we have a spiritual impact? by following in Jesus' incarnational example, even if people don't realize what is going on. Many of you are followers of Jesus because somebody prayed for you again and 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 again, and you never even knew it. Perhaps part of what God is calling us to, and just something I want to throw in there because it didn't, it wasn't something, it's something that I've been just reflecting on even more through the week. Perhaps part of what God wants to do in this time is for us to identify, but to do some of that identification in the background as we prayerfully love and serve our communities in ways that they, they aren't even aware of. So I'm not going to say go back to your groups because you're in them. Have a great discussion. Love you. Can't wait to hear the results, see the fruit and, and start putting some of this stuff into practice um, as we seek to love God and love people. Have fun.